I've come from a very liberal Muslim family background. Um, our ethnicity is Mauritian. Most Mauritian people are not that practicing, and you know they'll just wear English clothes as such, like Western trousers and jumpers, whether it's loose or whatever. Um, I hardly remember growing up seeing my family in hijabs and jilbabs. Times changed, I'd say, in the past five, six years. I noticed a difference where the shift has been that people are becoming more practicing, and so a lot of my family wear it, but my immediate family, you know, none of them, I would say, are practicing, but they do believe in Islam, as so did I, actually. Um, so, basically, for me, I grew up quite free. I went to college, I had friends, guy friends, girlfriends, I'd bring my friends home, my mum was okay with it, as long as I didn't have a boyfriend. Um, which we all did, you know, <laughs> secretly. <laughs> um, and then, like, you know, I... Huh? <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, yeah, and then, like, uh, I got married and um, I converted my husband to Islam. That's how strong my faith was. Even though I didn't pray... Yeah, I didn't pray five times a day. I didn't cover. But I had that faith. Islam is the right religion. I would, like, like um, my speaker said before, to think about Islam not even being right, didn't really enter into my head. As far as I was concerned, whether I followed it or not, as long as I believed it in my heart, it's the right religion. And so my boyfriend at that time was like, I don't understand how you're so like, um, you know, how can you believe it's right? And I'm like, I just know it is. You know, everything I've read, it's like, you know, it answers all your questions. And he was a Catholic, he used to go to church and be part of the choir. So I would go to Islamic bookshops for him and I'd buy him books comparing Islam and Christianity. And I would read these things as well. So he converted to Islam, so my mum would accept the marriage and stuff like that. Got married, I was married for seven years, had two kids. Um, our marriage didn't work out, unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I'm happy. <laughs> um, but basically, after um, the marriage broke up, I was left with two kids, three years old and two years old, single parent working full time, it was not easy. Um, so, I, he became more and more religious. He became very into the religion, very practicing. He was hanging around my brother. My brother became very practicing. He started to want to go and fight and become a jihadist and things like that. And, you know, my brother would give me lectures, tell me stuff. And, you know, I was interested in it. And, but then my mum cried to him, don't go and fight. He went to do training in Wells. Um, that's how serious he was. And um, basically, my mum cried, don't go and fight. We said don't. Then he met um, his now wife, who was a, a Nikabi. And he married her. And so he calmed down a bit. And they're full on practicing. Um, so... Basically, they're the only ones in our family who are practicing. But, you know, it made me think that, oh, I need to become a better Muslim. I've got two kids. I'm accountable for their sins. And when they're going to get to nine years old, they're going to be accountable for their sins. And I felt really guilty about that. So I tried to become practicing. I didn't cover. That was one thing that I was really struggling with. I thought, okay, I'm going to dress modestly. I won't show my arms. I won't wear tights and what I'm wearing now. <laughs> um, I, you know, so I would dress modestly. And where I worked, there was quite a few Muslim um, people there. In particular, there was a Muslim brother at the time. And um, me and him would talk a lot about religion. And he knew his stuff a lot. And I started to pray at work. I would pray five times a day, even if I was at work. Don't care, I'm going to pray on time. I fasted every day. I would cry on my prayer mat. Um, God, show me the right way. Make sure that my dean is strong, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the covering thing, I just couldn't get it. I couldn't understand why I had to cover my hair. I just, it really, I, that was the thing that really made me struggle. The other thing is, um, I started dancing when I sort of got my divorce, so about 30, I am quite old. Um, at 30, I started to dance. I went professional Bollywood dancing. I loved it. Got the kids into it. And obviously, dancing, music, doesn't bide well with Islam. So that was another one of my struggles. But I, I persevered on. I put the kids in madrasa on a Saturday, and I would be the only parent turning up without my head covered. The lady um, would, would, you know, I, I, I wouldn't get out of the car, so I'd be like, go kids, go. So they run out with their little um, dual babs on, and the, the lady, she was in the car, and I could see her eyes just piercing at me, and I was like, okay. Um, and so they would come back in the car after their madrasa lesson, and, you know, we'd start driving off, and then they'd be like, telling me things like, don't put the radio on, mum. Why? Oh, because, you know, it's like, it, we're going to go to hell, we're going to get burnt, you can't put it on, I'm scared, I'm scared. And I saw genuine fear in them. 
So that started to really make me question stuff. And then they'd ask me things and I couldn't answer it. Mum, why shouldn't we dance? Why can't we listen to music? Why this, why that? And you know what the beauty of children is? They question without fear. They just ask. I wasn't brought up to ask. I was brought to follow. And in my generation, we didn't have social media and all this stuff, okay? So you just knew what you knew. And I bought, I had the whole Bukhari set, I kid you not. And I read it all. Um, I, I'm not a learned, I wouldn't sound like learned and I know everything, but what I read was enough for me. I couldn't answer my kids' questions. It didn't sit well with me. The punishments, the things like that. And the more I looked into it, the more I realized there's so many contradictions. I'd only seen the good parts. I'd seen the parts of Allah's merciful, this, that, the other, and then I saw the other parts about, you know, if you do this, you'll get burnt in hell and he'll pour boiling water on you. And would I do that to my child, irrelevant of what crime they commit? I couldn't do it. So it started to make me question God. But I felt really awful for questioning. At the time, I had a very good friend who happens to be in this audience, and I, I started to be a bit brave to ask him. You know, I can't cover, I don't know what to do, this, that, the other. And then it came to light that he had the same views as me, which he'd never really discussed as such. And then I started to feel a bit normal. Then he introduced me to sort of like an ex-Muslim community. And then I really accepted the fact that, yeah, you know what, I definitely don't believe in this. I feel quite normal about it. And my, one of the challenges I've faced is how do I now teach my kids? How do I make them unlearn what I taught them in the first place? How do I now say to them, actually, you can do this and you can do that, and that's not wrong, and that's not wrong. And that, that's been quite difficult. And one of my fears was, what if I leave Islam and I, tell, and I don't bring my children up as Muslim, and then they grow up to be teenagers and they're like rebellious and they go into drugs and alcohol and this, 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 because religion will stop that. Because obviously Islam says no alcohol, cover, don't talk to boys. What if they get, I was really scared of that. Then I thought, you know what, I've just got to be a really good role model and I've got to teach them that they should know the difference between right and wrong. They should understand that we have this as instincts, as human, we know, okay, we know. It doesn't matter what anyone says. So when I left religion, one thing I've done with my kids is I've taught them to question and think freely, okay? Their dad's full on practicing. They see their dad every other weekend. They complain to me, dad makes us pray. Dad told us off for what we're wearing. Dad says that we're like 10 now, and like now they're 11 and 10. We should be covering, we should be doing this, we should be doing that. What I say to them is, respect your dad's religion. That's what he believes. That's his belief. Respect it. Have a relationship with your dad. So what if you have to go and pray when you're with him? But ask him questions. If you want to know something, ask him. He should be able to answer you because he's making you do it. Okay, he's telling you you shouldn't wear this. He's telling you you shouldn't have nail varnish. He's telling you this, this, this. You ask him, and if you're satisfied with the answer, that's absolutely fine. And if you're not, then that's up to you. Same way you can ask me, Mum, how comes this? How comes that? I'm absolutely fine with that. I bought them sort of um, The Magic of Reality, Richard Dawkins, more child-friendly book, so they could start looking at things like, oh, you know, concepts of aliens and monsters and things like that. You know, I brought them up telling them there's a monster in that cupboard, and if you're naughty, I'm putting you in there, and you know, things like that. Um, they're too clever to believe me on that kind of stuff. <laughs> they don't fall for it. Um, so yeah, that's been one of my biggest challenges, I think. You know, it's not when I was Muslim, it's been since I've left. And the other thing is, they're having to lead a double life, which I feel very guilty for, actually. Um, my, you know, my mum, my sister knows I, that I don't believe. My brother knows. My brother's wife doesn't talk to me and she keeps her children away from me because she doesn't want them to be influenced. Fair enough, I don't know what my nieces look like at the moment. My brother talks to me when she's not around. When she's, she's around, he doesn't talk to me. My sisters and my mum has been okay. They talk to me as long as I act normal. As long as when I walk into the house, same thing, no non halal, no no, that's, which is fine. I, I respect that's not a problem. Um, they do try and sort of say things to wind me up, push buttons, you know, things like if I say to my niece, oh, Sham, you know, your hair looks beautiful today. My sister will go, say mashallah, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> um, So they do things, and I just keep quiet. I just, I just take it. But I think the, the thing in this is that my kids also have to lead this life. It's one thing for me to do it. It's one thing for me to walk in and say salam to my family. My sister got married recently in December. There was enough nikah in the house. 
yeah, we covered our hair, we, we took part, we showed respect. My family, the outside family don't know, said salam to them and things like that. Um, but, you know, like, it's that the kids have to also pretend. They can't say that they eat pork when they're out with me. Or, you know, they can't say that they eat non-halal food. They can't brag about the Big Mac that they had. Even though I tell them it's really bad for them. Now they've gone off it because I show them all the stuff that's in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, basically, you know, so for them, I think it's been quite... Con I don't want to confuse them. This is my thing. But you'd be surprised at how children are just adaptable. And they understand it. And they're like, yeah, we get it, Mum. Because, you know, if we say this, then we're going to get more problem than it's worth. And so are you. And, they, and actually, it's made them more accepting. So what they do now is they accept everybody's beliefs. They accept the way people are, just the way I do. Um, so actually, maybe that is a good thing. Um, my daughter, she, she says, the eldest one says, I'm atheist. And she actually got um, an award in school for religious philosophy and education for having the best debate as to her, you know, what she believes in. And um, the little one, she's a little bit more, <laughs> she's a little bit more in the middle. She's a bit more like, I think she's a bit confused, if I'm honest. I think she doesn't really believe in the religion, but she's unsure about God. She asks me a lot of questions, and if I don't know the answer, I tell her I don't know. Um, but I think because, she, you know, she's daddy's little girl as well, and I think she wants to please dad, and, you know, it is, it is hard for them. So I don't want to put pressure. I've said to them, whatever you choose, I will accept it. It's up to you. Um, and I just try to be a good role model. And I haven't had to use Islam to keep them in... in shape. I haven't had to, you know, put the fear of life and God into them. Um, they still dance, they enjoy it. We don't see it as doing anything bad. We're not bad people, they're not bad people. If anything, we're probably one of the kindest and most human in comparison to other families, in comparison to sometimes the things that my family says and does. Um, you know, they're not toler tolerant of Jews and Hindus, if I'm honest with you. They're not tolerant of other people. They say they are, but they're not. I hear it. I'm in the house. I hear the stuff they say. And I have to tell my kids, um, don't listen to that rubbish. You know, pe pe people are human. Just take people as being human. So, you know, we, we're always going to have this battle because no matter what, my family are important to me. And their dad's there. And as long as the kids want to see their dad, they're going to see their dad. So it's just about teaching them to really accept both sides. Um, I think everything's been okay as long as we go along with stuff. On Saturday, I did have a bit of an issue because my sister found out that I was talking at this event. So she sent me a big message saying, look, we were okay with what you believe and everything like that. However, why are you going public with it? Now that you're going public with it, me and mum are not going to support you. How could you go and bitch about Islam and slag it off? And this is the religion that me and your mum follow. How could you do it? And I had to kind of say to her, well, get your facts straight. I'm not here to slag off religion. I'm here to just talk about my experience. Yeah, I respect your belief. Your belief is your belief. It makes you a better, good, better person. If it makes your life better, go for it. But it shouldn't affect other people. That's one of my biggest <coughs> things. And, you know, just get facts straight. Don't think the minute somebody is doing something, it's an attack on Islam. It is not. It's just people share, sharing their experience. We're allowed to talk too. We do have a voice as well. And I want my kids to have a voice. And it's really hard for them, you know? So hopefully this will be the beginning of kind of just being a bit more open about it and allowing my girls to also not feel like they have to hide what they believe in.